This is part 2 of what if Yoda went to Mustafar. So if you haven't seen part 1, click the card in the right hand corner and go watch that video first. But with that out of the way, let's get into it. Padme lands on a platform across from where Palpatine and Yoda landed. Anakin leaves Palpatine as if he wasn't even there and he goes to run to see Padme. As she walks down the ramp, Anakin keeps running and gives her a big hug. The smile on his face is very big, and he feels home. Nothing else seems to bother him, and for a second, he forgot where he was. He looks at Padme, and he asks her what she's doing here. And then right after that, too fast to let Padme say something, he says, Wait, are you okay? Is the baby okay? She says yes, and then she says that she was really worried about him, and she had to go see him. She asks Anakin to come back with her, so that they can raise their child on that boo. She also forgot about the fact that Anakin had killed those younglings. They were both in a moment together, and it seemed like there was nothing else around them except for beautiful green grass and flowers. However, this couldn't be further from the truth, as they were on a lava planet, and Palpatine was slowly walking behind them to get on the platform. Anakin then says, I'm so close to saving you. And once that happens, we'll be able to do anything we want. Palme now came back to reality, and she glanced around and saw the Emperor walking towards them. Anakin noticed Pazme shifts, and he looked around and saw Palpatine. Again, Anakin asked Palpatine how he could save her. Palpatine took his time to respond. In his mind, he says to himself, Padme has become a big distraction for Lord Vader. I cannot allow her to survive. And Lord Vader has become too powerful. And soon he will try to kill me and take my place as ruler and emperor of the galaxy. Now speaking out loud, he says, You still need a bit more power. And then you will be able to save your wife from certain death. But Anakin was impatient now, and he knew he was powerful enough. He started to get a bit angry against Palpatine. He responded by saying, when will that be? Both Anakin and the Emperor were tired of playing this game. And then unexpectedly, the Emperor shoots a lightning bolt at Anakin and Padme. He holds it for three seconds and then charges up and fires again at Anakin. Anakin was now ready and managed to pull his lightsaber out, barely able to block the strongest, powerful attack. While Anakin was focused on protecting himself, Palpatine changed his angle and fired at Padme as well, while having his evil sinister laugh. <laughs> Palpatine closed her eyes and prayed for her safety. Just as the lightning was supposed to hit her, she felt nothing. She looked up, and she sees Obi-Wan in front of her, blocking the lightning, and saving her life. Obi-Wan and Anakin both made contact, and then Obi-Wan says, We must stop this evil together. Palpatine now stops his force lightning. Young fools, I hope you do not truly believe you can defeat me. I am the all-powerful Emperor, and I am unstoppable. But I guess I will have to teach you both a lesson about the dark side of the force. We will see about that, replied Obi-Wan. Padme, get back to your ship and wait for me on Naboo. Padme complied with Anakin's orders and she got on the ship and left the planet. Once I kill you both, I will make sure she suffers a horrific death. Ha 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 ha. Soon I shall be the only one to rule this galaxy with nothing to stop me. I thought that Lord Vader would be by my side, but his love blinds him, and he cannot be fully attuned to the dark side. That would be the only way you can defeat me. Palpatine turns on his lightsaber, and then it is followed by Anakin and Obi-Wan's. They may have defeated Dooku together, but Palpatine is on another level. Palpatine takes the offensive and charges at the Jedis. The Jedis each go on opposite ends of Palpatine, and they are now prepared to attack. They attack at the same time. 
Obi-Wan's attack being less powerful and a bit less fast, but his attacks are very safe and difficult to counter. Anakin, on the other hand, strikes fast and strong. Palpatine, of course, is able to block each attack as he has mastered every lightsaber form. He knows them all, and he can use whichever one is most effective depending on his scenario. Compared to fighting Dooku and Yoda, who each have their own lightsaber styles, Palpatine does it, and this makes him very unpredictable and very hard to read. Yet Palpatine is alone, and Anakin and Obi-Wan are fighting in sync with one another, the complete opposite of the way they fought Dooku three years ago. Even though Anakin just fought Yoda, he is not tired. He doesn't even feel worse as any way. If anything, it was just a warm up for the real fight in front of him. Both Anakin and Obi-Wan realize how important this battle is. If they lose, it will cause millions to suffer and no one will be able to stop it. For Anakin, he's thinking about what will happen to Padme if Palpatine survives. He knows that that evil monster will torture and kill his wife and kid. That thought flicks a switch inside of him, and he starts to light up. He's like a furnace, getting hotter and hotter as time goes on. Anakin aggressively strikes at Palpatine, and Palpatine is starting to get worried. He knows he can't keep up with the two Jedi coming after him. So like he did when he fought Mace Windu and the three other Jedi Masters, he goes for the weakest link first, that being Obi-Wan. As Anakin strikes Palpatine, Palpatine force pushes him back, and then goes ballistic on Obi-Wan for 3 seconds. He's a blur, and so fast. However, Obi-Wan is THE master of Form 3, which is the defensive form. He just nearly survives the attack, and Anakin is back. Palpatine jumps away from them, and Anakin charges at him. Obi-Wan seeing this, jumps ahead of Anakin, as he knows what will happen next. Sidious fires lightning from his hands, and it hits Anakin for a second before Obi-Wan blocks it. Anakin is slightly stunned, but with not that much effect. He jumps over Obi-Wan and strikes down on Palpatine's head. This is followed by Obi-Wan attacking to his left side. Both Anakin and Obi-Wan are on the offensive now, and Palpatine is backing up. They go through the same hallway that Anakin killed Yoda in, but nobody noticed it. Just a split second of distraction is enough for Palpatine to kill, just like he did with Kit Fisto. Anakin is leading the charge, with Obi-Wan helping him out. They get back outside, with lava flying all over the place. They get to the end of the surface, they now have to cross a dangerous pipe that is floating over the lava. Palpatine is really worried, but he doesn't show it. He jumps onto the pipe and tries to quickly and yet safely go to the other side. Anakin follows Palpatine and charges at him. Right when he attacks Sidious, he cuts the pipe, grabs a hold of Palpatine, and then makes him fall into the lava. Obi-Wan yells, No! With that, both Anakin and the Emperor fall to their doom, leaving Obi-Wan alive. Anakin redeems himself by sacrificing himself to save his master, his wife, and his future children. He brings balance to the Force, as the prophecy stated, and now he is no more. That is the end of What If Yoda Went to Mustafar. Let me know in the comments what you thought about it, and what you would have done differently. If you guys want to see more What Ifs, then subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. But apart from that, have a great day.